Well, hello there. I'm Marley Bird, and this is video four of the My First Knit Summer Vest Knit Along. I am so thrilled you guys have joined me on this journey to make this beautiful vest. If you have not started yet, it is not too late. All you need to do is download that free pattern, gather your materials, and then watch these videos as I walk you through everything you need to know to complete this pattern. I also offer a lot of hints and tips along the way. If you need a link to that free pattern, I've provided it in the video description box below for your convenience. By this point in the pattern, you have completed the entire bottom half and the back of the pattern. In this video, we will discuss the right and left front, as well as the collar and the final seaming. By the end of this week's instruction, or if you have the full pattern already, by the end of this part, you will have a completed vest that you could wear out by the weekend or to work next week. Isn't that exciting? I am so excited to jump forward with all of this. The first thing we need to do is take a look at the pattern and understand exactly what it is we will be doing in this week's instructions. All right, here it is, you guys. This is the pattern you have received so far if you're following along with the knit along. The first page is just the generic first page that we've had all along. So I'm gonna go ahead and jump to page two. Same information as far as sizing and gauge and instructions and right here is where we are going to begin. We will work on the right front of the vest to begin today. When we join with the right front, remember we do want to make sure that we are joining with our yarn in the correct placement as far as color goes. And I went over that in last week's video showing you how to make sure that your yarn was prepared for the front. So make sure you are joining at the correct place in the color um, placement of your sets, okay? So that's what this here is, is commenting. We will be joining the yarn with the wrong side facing because when we did our bind off at the end of week two, we finished on the right side. So as we turn our work, we will be joining on the wrong side, just like we did in week three for the back. It's after we join our yarn and work across this, this wrong side row, we will purl to our marker slip our marker, and then get back into our knit two, purl two ribbing. So the entire time we're working on the fronts, whether it's the right front or the left front, when you get to those rib stitches, you will continue to keep those stitches in ribbing, okay? So whether you're following along with a checklist or you're following along with your own pattern, you wanna make sure you always keep those rib stitches in the actual ribbing because that will become the collar later on. The stitches in between in the body of the fabric will either be knits or purls or those wrap stitches, just like we've been doing all along. The important thing to note here is that as you're working along your pattern, you'll notice that it says to decrease one stitch at the armhole edge every right side row, and then it gives you the number of times. You'll notice that this number coincides with the same number of times you did your decreases on the back for that right side. And then um, same thing when you come over here to the left front, it'll be decreases at the armhole edge and it's exactly what you did on the back on the left side, okay? So they are the same. So these two pieces, you know how to do after last week's homework. This is exactly what you did. We decreased and we got to the number of stitches we needed after our decreases, which were right there, okay? And we ended after a wrong side row. Which brings us to the next row, which is our neck shaping. And the next shaping is this, and I'm gonna, I'm going to, Go to the next page so you can see something here because this is the first time many of you have seen the schematic and you'll notice that you have worked up to this point you've completed all of this and so this is the right front okay so you've worked across the ribbing and you've worked across and you've done these decreases here at the armhole edge but now you will begin to work decreases along the neck edge and that's going to make it so that your neck can shape um, this part here can shape up and go back around your neck without being really claustrophobic. It'll make it lay really nice along your body. So once you have finished the armhole shaping, we then jump to the neck shaping. And the great thing here is the neck shaping will allow us to decrease stitches. So we'll have fewer stitches as we go along, which means it'll go faster. But once all of the neck shaping is complete, 
and we work even up until we do those shoulder shaping, just like we did over here, it won't be very far. So this entire section is gonna go really quickly. Same goes for over here, okay? So let's review this one more time. You'll be working across your rows, you know, I guess you start this way first and then you go back and forth and you'll do your shaping over here at your armhole. Once your armhole shaping is complete, that's when you will start your neck shaping. And let's talk a little bit more about the neck shaping, okay? As we talk about the neck shaping, you'll notice that it says here, so we're back at the right front, we're on the right side, so we work our ribbing stitches and we slip our marker, and then it says knit one and then SSK. So what that is going to do is just like when we did our armhole shaping over here, and I mentioned keeping that one stitch next to the armhole edge for a kind of a selvage, it's very similar, that's what we're gonna be doing over here. So as you're working across your ribbing, you'll knit one stitch, and then you'll do that SSK. And an SSK leans to the left, and notice how these stitches here, we want them to lean to the left, these stitches here, we want those to lean to the right. So on this side, we will use an SSK at the neck edge, but you will use a knit two together at the armhole edge when you're down here. On this side, you will use an SSK at the armhole edge, but when it's the neck edge, you'll use the knit two together because you want it to lean to the right, okay? These are things that you can add to your knitter's toolbox. This is everything that um, knitters learn along the way, and so sometimes patterns will be written, assuming that you already know this and now you do, so that is really convenient for you, right? Okay. So once you do that knit one and then your SSK, you'll work in your pattern to the end of the row and you've decreased one stitch. Now, what does that mean, work in the pattern to the end of the row? Well, I'm glad you asked. This actually goes back to what we talked about at the end of week two and we continue to talk about in week three as far as maintaining your pattern. I did show you how to make a chart if you are a person who likes to make charts or if you're somebody who likes to look at your actual fabric and count your stitches along the way, you could do that as well. So let's take a look down here and I'm gonna show you a couple things. So this here, I know it's hard to see, don't worry, I've got something bigger here. Um, this is very similar to something I showed you, I think it was in week two, but this is a full representation of what the top half of the vest would be. Can you see how it looks very similar to, to the schematic? See that? Okay. So right here, as you work these SSKs in, all of these stitches disappear, that's why those are in black. These are our shaping stitches for our armhole. So then these disappeared because of our bind off, so on and so forth, okay, can you see that? What I wanna talk about here is the maintaining our pattern, um, established pattern. As we worked our bind off row for, let's say the size small, this represents a size small, we had one, two, three wraps and we bound off and then you had more wraps, you bound off and one, two, three wraps. But as you begin to work into the right front, your wrap count changes. So down here, this was a row nine wrap. The row 18 wrap, you have two. We're back to the row nine wrap up here, but see how there isn't one over here? And that's because our stitches start to interfere. We begin to get fewer stitches, so we cannot work this wrap up here. So we turn those all into stockinette stitch. You continue on, it's the same thing. Those wraps work, because we still have enough stitches to work them. These wraps here still work because we have enough stitches to work them. But then when we get up here, see how this one is no longer there. We only have the one wrap. So when the pattern tells you to maintain your established pattern, this is what it's telling you to do. So as you're working on your pattern and working for the size you are making, make sure you are continuing to work in your established pattern. And whenever your decreases interfere with those wraps, you don't want to make it so that all of a sudden you're only wrapping three or you're only wrapping four. Just change all of those stitches into stockinette stitch and keep them there. Okay, as long as your wraps all line up, up and down from the bottom to the top, everything's gonna look beautiful, okay? So that's what that means when it says work in established pattern. I'm going to move this page because I took this piece and I essentially cut all of this off. And so I'm just gonna show you this section here, right there, see it's much bigger. I told you I would get something bigger for you. Okay, so this is the best way I can give you a visual representation of what you will be doing for the right front and then I'll talk to you about the left front. 
Um, I don't have a picture of any of the ribbing stitches. The ribbing stitches would be out over here, okay? So I don't have those in this image. But you see this one long line of stitches right there? It's just kind of hanging out out there. That's gonna be our selvage stitch. That stitch is going to stay there the whole time. Even as we go and bind off these, or not bind off, but put these stitches on a holder. Because this stitch here, as we continue on for the collar, will be what we are going to sew to the back of the neck. And that'll be more clear as we get to it. So just know that you will always have that one stitch. So you'll have 20 stitches and then one stitch. And then you'll have your, your decrease and so on and so forth. As you are working all of your decreases, the biggest thing you need to remember, and this goes for all sizes, it says to work your decrease, and then it says to work a decrease three more times every fourth row. So it would be one, two, three, fourth row, here's a decrease. One, two, three, fourth row, here's a decrease. One, two, three, fourth row, here's a decrease. So that's one, two, three more times. Okay, so you did one, and then there's three more times. Then for each size, it's different for how many sizes you then will decrease every other right side row. Okay, so each size will have a different number for how many times you decrease down for every right side row. Our ultimate goal here, you guys, when we get up here to the top, we want to have the same number of stitches at the top of our right front and the top of our left front as we did when we put all of these stitches on holders for our shoulder when we did week three. That number and that number should match up. That number and that number should match up, okay? Does this make sense? I think it's really important you understand how the construction of the vest goes. At this point, you know how to do the pattern stitch. You know how to do these decreases. We talked about those last week. Now it's just a matter of understanding how a pattern is written and how that coincides with how the fabric is actually constructed and what our ultimate goal is. So we are decreasing at our armhole edge to get us to the right cross back measurement and to make sure our arms can fit into the vest. And then when we decrease at our neck edge, that makes it so that our neck is opening up so that we get the proper um, measurement for the back of our neck and everything will lay nice and neat and it's not kind of closed up on us. We'll have a nice um, sort of a V-neck of going on to our work. Make sense, okay? As you go through all of this, once this piece here measures the same distance as your back did before you did your short rows, that's when you'll do your short rows. Conveniently, if you have marked off all of your rows when you did your back, it will be very easy for you to also count how many rows you have for the front because it'll be the same number. The only difference there is on the right front, we will end on a wrong side just like we did on the back, but on the left front, we end on a right side, okay? So you'll have one more row on the left front than you do um, on the back and on the right front, all right? It's just, the, it's just the way it goes. So as you're working these stitches, and you then work your short rows, which we know how to do after last week, and then you'll put all of those stitches on a holder. When it's time to put your shoulder stitches on a holder and then continue on with your ribbing stitch and your one selvage stitch, you can either work across those stitches and then put them on a holder or put them on a holder, cut your yarn, rejoin. I will leave it up to you. The pattern specifically says that you are supposed to um, you'll be on the wrong side. It says place the next however many stitches on waist yarn for the holder. And then it says you would continue on with the purl one and then you would have your ribbing stitches to the end. You, you do whatever works for you. I think it's probably easier to work across those stitches and then put them on a holder. I find that easier, but you can do what works best for you, okay? Once those stitches are on a holder, you will then carry on with the ribbing stitch and that one selvage stitch for the collar, but we'll come to that for a minute, okay? So you get the overall gist of what we're doing. We are completing the right front. Once this is all complete, you then would do the left front. Let's see, it works like this. So this is just the opposite, right? These are SSKs, these are knit two togethers. Again, you work up until it's time to do your, um, uh, short row shaping and then those are stitches on a holder then you have your one stitch out here and then your ribbing so it's the same idea okay 
What I wanna do right now is I wanna show you on my little sample swatch that I've been working along off and on with you throughout this entire project, I wanna show you how to get those stitches from a holder onto your needle, how to get those first couple rows going, and then we're gonna jump ahead and take a look at how to um, do the three needle bind off for our shoulder. We're going to then talk about the collar and then seaming the collar to the back of our neck. The last thing to do is the final trim around the armhole, which is so incredibly easy. It's, it's like, you're gonna be like, oh, this is great. Um, so that's the next step. I know I've talked a lot so far, but again, when we're working these knit alongs together, I think it's important that I use them as a teaching tool to better um, instruct you and help you understand what you're doing so that you can take these skills and carry on to make other items later on. So if you've stuck with me this far, thank you so much. Let's go ahead. I'm going to grab my little sample swatch and we are going to get started with the right front. Okay, looking down here, you can be like, wait a minute, you already have the left front done. Yes, I do, because I needed to have it ready to go so I could show you how to do the three needle bind off and how to add this collar to the back of the neck. But this is a good example for me to show you what you will be doing over here. So we're gonna ignore this right now. Let's jump over here to the right side. So this is my right front. Um, I put my right front on scrap yarn, as you guys remember, and I'm going to leave the scrap yarn in place. You'll notice on the left front, I did the same thing. I'm gonna let that be there and, and act as a lifeline. So if I make some sort of a huge error up here, I have a place to come back to where I can start it all over. So I'm gonna leave that in place as a lifeline. I'm gonna grab some needles here. And I'm using my circular, so everything is already detached, so I can grab my circulars. And I'm just going to place these stitches right onto my circular needle, okay? And yes, I have the right front, or the right front, the right side facing me. You can do this with the, the wrong side facing you. It doesn't really matter. I will be turning my work so that we are looking at the wrong side. Um, something about doing this on the right side for me makes sense. All right, make sure you don't Split your scrap yarn if you uh, did scrap yarn like I did. When you come to your wraps, take your time, make sure you get all five of those stitches. We're gonna just keep going here. Make sure you don't miss any of them. And what's handy is with the scrap yarn, if you feel like you are missing one, you can kind of pull it up and see it. All right, so there are all of my stitches on my needle again. I'm gonna keep this in place and let it be like a lifeline. So the instructions tell us we wanna make sure we have the wrong side facing. So I'm gonna turn my work and making sure that you are starting again, I just wanna repeat this, if you want your fronts to match, make sure you're starting at a point in your yarn set that will be the same point that you start on the left front. I didn't care with my little swatch here and you don't have to care on yours either. It's totally up to you, but I just wanna remind you, if you want it to be um, color-wise seamless on the fronts at least, you wanna make sure that you start at the correct placement that you planned um, on the, the start of week three. Okay, let me get all of this. I have yarn everywhere, it feels like. <laughs> okay, so I'm going to put my needles in place here and I'm gonna grab my yarn. This would be your yarn, whatever you're using, and we will begin. So on the wrong side, it automatically says pearl to marker. Now, um, I removed my marker. So if you removed your marker too, totally fine, just re-add your marker, okay? So we can do that. I'm going to purl across, and our marker was essentially right before all of our ribbing stitches. So if you are lost on where your marker should be, that's where it will be. It'll be right where your ribbing stitches are, okay? So I'm just coming across, and let's get over here. And this is where my rib stitches start, so I can go ahead and grab a marker. Let me grab one over here. I'm gonna put that in place, and I carry on. So I grab my marker, and then it says to then work your ribbing pattern. So this would be my knit two, purl two ribbing to the end. And this knit two, purl two ribbing is what, gosh, I keep wanting to do one by one. Um, this is what will become our collar, as I mentioned. So when all of our fronts are done, we actually carry on 
with these 20 stitches plus one stitch over here as a selvage, so it'll be 21 stitches. And then that will become um, our collar and we'll seam it to the back of our neck on the back of our sweater. All right, so I'm down here at the end. This first row, there's no shaping. We're essentially just getting everything going, getting everything set in place, okay? As I turn my work and do this next right side row, that's when all of the shaping is gonna begin at my armhole edge, okay? So I wanna take care of all of the shaping at my armhole edge first, and then I'll take care of the shaping at my neck edge. We know how to do the armhole edge shaping. We did it in last week's video. So I'm gonna jump ahead and we're going to begin working in our armhole or our neck shaping, okay? So let's do that. Okay, as I mentioned, we already know how to do the armhole shaping, so I'm gonna ignore that on my swatch here. I'm gonna jump right to the neck shaping, but you'll do the neck shaping after your armhole. So make sure you're following along with your pattern. So I'm jumping down to the neck shaping and it starts on the right side, which is where we are, which is fantastic. First thing you do is you work across these ribbed stitches, okay? Again, you will keep these in the rib pattern throughout. So just keep that in mind, just maintain your rib pattern. It's really in the body of the work where things change up more and more, okay? These 20 stitches are always the same. So let's get over here to my marker that I have in place. I'll slip my marker. I will knit one. This one stitch right here will become my selvage stitch. So when all of these stitches go to a um, holder for the shoulder, all of these stitches here will continue on. And as I seam this to the back of the neck, this selvage stitch will be hidden, okay? So just kind of keep that in mind. Now I'm gonna do an SSK. So I will slip one zip to knit, slip one zip to knit, take my left hand needle, put it in the front leg of those two, and then knit them together. Now here's a little trick that I do. I usually will take a removable stitch marker like this one, and I stick it into the stitch I just created. Okay, so it's literally on the needle and it's just resting in the stitch. What that does is I now have a place that I can count how many decreases I've done. So if at some point in time I forget to keep a tally mark on my post-it note, forget to make a little check mark in my knit companion, or mark something in a checklist, I can always go back to my piece and count exactly how many decreases I've done. It just makes it a lot easier, so I will always use stitch markers when I'm working decreases like this. You can do the same if you want, so I figured I'd show you. All right, so once you have done that decrease, you then will continue on in pattern. Well, for this particular pattern, this would just be knitting across, like we don't have any sort of a wrap row, because this would technically be our row 11, correct? Because I didn't do any shaping here, so this would technically be row 11. You see what I mean about just maintaining your stitch pattern? Get to the end, turn your work, and you carry on. Now, it's at this point, that for the next shaping, it says that you will decrease every fourth row three times. So that was one, so we have three more times. So what we would do here is we would purl across to our marker on this particular row. And again, you wanna make sure that you're keeping in your sequence. So if this happened to be your wrap row, you would do your wraps. Whatever row you're on, that's what you need to do, okay? slip my marker and I'm back to my ribbing. So I would just work across my rib stitches. Pretty easy, pretty self-explanatory. And what you once you get going, you're like, oh man, this is cake. And as I mentioned, <laughs> so you've decreased the stitches at the armhole and now we're decreasing stitches at the neck edge. So you are gonna be going really fast in these two sections. It will go a lot quicker than weeks one and two did, I'll tell you that, because there are fewer stitches to do. That was one row, right? So I have two more rows. So one way I think about it is that was my first wrong side row. So I will do this right side row and then I would have one more wrong side row and I would do another decrease, right? So it's like every, every other right side row and you would do that three times. I know you know what that means. So what I'm gonna do here is we're gonna pretend again. 
We're gonna pretend that we have done those decreases every fourth row um, for three more times and we're back to, this is now where it says to decrease um, every other row X number of times, okay? So we're gonna jump ahead. You guys with me here? So I'm pretending that I've already done the working the decrease every fourth row three more times. And then the next set of instructions say, then work every other row decrease X number of times. We're gonna pretend that's where we are. So what I would do here is, so if this was the last time I did my decrease on the fourth row, I would purl back and now I'm ready to do it every other row. So I slip my marker, I knit one, and I work a decrease again. So I slip as if to knit, slip as if to knit, and knit those together. Once again, I would grab another marker, put it into the stitch that's on my needle, and carry on. Okay, can you guys see how this works? Eventually, you will get down to where the number of stitches you have, let me show you, the number of stitches you have in between this marker and right here, you wanna make sure you don't include that one right after the marker, okay? Remember, because that'll be the selvage. So this number of stitches will be equal to the number of stitches you put on a holder for the shoulder on the back, because these will match up, okay? I feel like you should know how this works now, okay? You've seen how those decreases work. They begin to start shaping. Let's take a look at the left side, okay? So the left and the right are virtually the same. It's just you're on different sides of the fabric, right? So you would carry on, maintain your stitch pattern, yada, yada, yada. So let's scooch this. I'm going to, I'm gonna cut this so that it's done, just so that it's out of the way, all right? So we're gonna scooch the right side, come over here to the left side that I've completed. On this left side, again, you can see the markers that I held in place. So this one here, this was my first one. This was my second one that I did after four, like on the fourth row, I did one. And then because I'm working on a smaller piece, then I jumped to every other row and I did that for a couple times. I forgot a marker right there, but I did that several times, okay? When I got up to where I had the number of stitches right here, these equal the same number of stitches I have over here on this shoulder on the back. All right, so I put those on a holder. Then I continued on just working in my ribbing, including that one selvage stitch right there. You see that one solitary stitch out there? Okay, that's my one selvage stitch. So I continued on with my ribbing with my selvage stitch, and I did this until it measures You'll have an exact measurement in the pattern, but essentially, if I were to match up these shoulders, you want this to measure half of your bind off edge at the back of the neck, okay? So it's written exactly in your pattern how long your collar should be, but that length is supposed to be equal to half the length of the back neck bind off stitches. So if for some reason your collar needs to be a little bit longer or a little bit shorter to make it so it's the halfway point, you make sure you can make those adjustments. But that's our goal here. We are making this collar portion long enough so that we can seam it with this selvage stitch to these, or the selvage stitch here to these stitches here halfway. And then when this side would be complete, it would be worked halfway and it would be worked across this side. So then it would be joined here and then we would join here. Can you see how that goes? Okay. It's it's sort of like an, an origami sort of piece, right? But this is essentially what the fronts would look like. I know you can do this. These, these are not new stitches to you. You're just doing something a little bit different in the pattern, but as long as you're following along with the pattern, keeping track, whether it's with a post-it, with your knit companion, with a checklist, you will be just fine. Once both of your fronts are complete, it's then time that we do some finishing. And the lucky thing here is there's not a lot of finishing on this piece. And I will show you real quickly the things you need to know to complete your vest. Down here, you can see I'm back to the beginning part of my vest. Um, just ignore the fact that the right front is not done. We're gonna continue on with the left front so that I can seam all this together. That's why I finished that portion. But the instructions tell us that we want to match up our shoulder stitches from the left front and the left side of the back. We are going to match them together, okay? And we wanna do that with the wrong side. So I'm gonna make this so it's the wrong side. 
and I will take these stitches and put them on a needle and these stitches and put them on a needle and we are going to do what's called a three needle bind off and when I put them on the needle I want to make sure that my needle tip is pointing over here to the right so let me show you how to do this if you are using circular needles one thing you can do let's use this one here I'm going to take this and I'm going to just start to take these off just like so and then I'm going to circle it around so to speak and then get the front stitches okay so there's that one and if I want to make pretend that those are on this needle so now I carry this needle around here take the front here and let's get them on this needle oh, I put it in goofy of course so I'm going to just kind of scoop it in oh okay don't panic anybody I'm just gonna throw them on here <laughs> as I wasn't thinking before okay there we go so you can double check here I have one two three four five six seven over here on this side I have one two three four five six seven so I have the same number of stitches on both sides I partner them up just like so and this is where you will use your spare needle or the DPN or something that you have handy okay so I'm just going to grab another set of needles here and let me zoom down so you can get a better look at what we're doing here okay that's got to be better I am going to use a contrasting color of yarn to do this just for the video you will be using your same yarn that you used for your vest okay but you essentially are going to knit these two stitches together with your yarn so you'll use this needle you'll go into the one that's close to you you'll go into the one that's furthest away from you yarn over your needle and then pull that through both of them and jump off okay so that's one now you'll go into the first one go into the next one and then we're going to knit them together okay and we have knit those together now we have two stitches on our right hand needle we have the back stitch jump up and over that front stitch and off so that's a bind off we do one more stitch have the back stitch jump up and over that front stitch do another stitch see how this works we are seaming these two or joining these two stitches together and binding them off at the same time and so we're going to get a nice solid seam here at the top which is what I want because it will help hold the weight of the yarn at your shoulder um, I didn't want to do a graft or anything there I wanted something that would hold the weight of the cotton yarn okay just be, be mindful of your needles they want to fall all over the place and just bind it off see here so close I just had a few stitches here some of you will have more but it'll, it's the same process and when you get to the end here make sure you go through both of them that's where the tail was so that's why that loop is kind of big and then the back one jump over the front one cut your yarn make sure you leave a nice little tail so you can weave it in and conveniently you're gonna have a nice seam there to just weave it into just pull it out you can see here so this is the wrong side of the fabric I've seamed it all together we can take our tails and weave them right in there to that nice big seam we have it's very similar to like a crocheted seam when you rotate it over you can see my pink yarn there but if you're using the same yarn as you did on your project you won't see anything there but it makes things come together real nice isn't that pretty so that's it how easy is that I know some of you out there worked on the knit along for the my first sweater and we did a lot of mattress stitch in that one 
Isn't this super easy? This is a great way to seam together shoulders on pieces, in my opinion. If you have live stitches and you're able to do this, um, it gives you a really nice seam, it holds the weight, and it's just really nice. So there is something else you can add to your knitter's toolbox right there. I love the three needle bind off. Once you've done the three needle bind off, it is then time to take your collar and we are going to match up these stitches here, which are actually rows, right? Because these are rows of stitches. And then these are stitches. We're going to seam these together, okay? So the big thing when we work on this is we wanna have a bent tip tapestry needle. It makes it a lot easier. And we wanna make sure we have a good length of yarn because you don't want to run out midway through. You wanna be able to work through the entire piece to get it all seamed together. The last thing is, because we're seaming together rows to stitches, we might have to skip one or two rows along the way to make sure that nothing bunches up, but you're gonna be just fine. Let me show you how to do this next bit of seaming. Okay, so we have our shoulder seam. I have not tucked in any of my ends. I just kind of left them. I'm going to go ahead and let this fold in on itself. So this would have been folded together, everything looks great, and now we have this collar here. So this collar, what I wanna do here, again, you will knit it to the length listed in the pattern, and then we are essentially going to take the collar and just like fold it down so it matches up with the back of the vest, and we're gonna seam that together. The first thing I like to do is I like to add stitch markers just to pin it together so that I have a good idea where I want things to be placed so that they don't get out of shape. So I'm just generalizing this and I'm just pinning it just to get it started, okay? And I might pin one in the center just to make sure I don't pull it one way or another, okay? So, and this is just a personal preference. I like to do that, okay? Let's go ahead and zoom in and get started with this seam. This is really easy, don't be, don't be afraid, you can do this. Once again, I am going to use a different color yarn so you can see the stitches I'm creating and I've put it on a bent tip tapestry needle, okay? I like to start right here on the outside and work towards this direction. If you wanna go the opposite way, you can. This just works best for me. Our ultimate goal here is to take these stitches that we have worked going up this way. So all of our stitches look like a V, right? And we want to join them to the selvage edge over here. And we're looking at pearl bumps over here. So we will be pulling up um, bars over here on this side, okay? The first thing you wanna do is we are not going to put our needle underneath Vs, okay? See how the V let me see how I can explain this. So the V, like this is our actual stitch, right? Those Vs. What I wanna do is I wanna go through the center of one V and come out the center of the one next to it. So I've picked up the left leg of one V and the right leg of the next V, okay? I have recently learned that this is proper for doing seaming like this. I always thought you pulled up through um, like the, the stitch itself, but no, you go from one leg to the next. I just didn't know that. All right, once you've done that and you pull it through, you're gonna come up here and we're going to work with the bars between the stitches here and our selvage. So I can go ahead and I can remove my marker because I, I know that's where I want it to be, so I've already placed it. And I'm going to look for the bar right there. So I'm gonna grab one bar and pull this up, okay? I come back down here, I insert where my yarn came out and I come out the opposite, not the opposite, the next V over, okay? So I go in one and out the next one over. Come down. I'm gonna come back up here and I'm gonna go, make sure I'm following one more bar down. You might have to spread them apart a little bit because they're the pearls, but you can find it. I'm just gonna go one bar down. 
you've probably noticed that I have more rows than I have stitches available to work into them. That's the part where it's important that we know that we are going to skip some rows up here, but we will be using every single stitch down here, okay? So you just sort of finesse it along the way unless you have um, a more technical mind and you want to calculate exactly how many rows you will skip versus how many stitches you have, so on and so forth. Because I know that many of us just kind of want to just get after it, it's easier for me to just finesse it and look at it and kind of artfully put it together, just make sure it looks really good. And so as I come up, I might be like, okay, so I'm going to skip that bar. Maybe I'll just come up here and I'll just go grab this bar. And you just start to seam it together. You always go in where you came out below and you, you go to the next stitch over, right up the center of the V. You'll notice I did not attach this one yet in the sense of I didn't seam it in or tack it down. It's because I wanna be able to pull both ends to pull this together, and so I don't attach it quite yet. But as I keep going here, let's just get this whole thing attached the best we can. I think it's time I skip another bar up here. I know that I've taken some online classes with like Sally Melville and my good friend Deborah Newton um, has a book out there for finishing. Oh, I lost my, my yarn. Um, there are a lot of tools out there for you to become a more proficient uh, finisher if that's something you want to look into. But this is a great beginner way to get introduced to this because this really isn't going to show too much. It's on the back of your neck. And so um, not very often are these stitches going to show. All right. So when you get down here to the end and I'm going to come over here and I'm going to grab that one. Okay. I want you to see this. This is something that's like, Ooh, I don't know if I want to grab that one. Maybe I do. I don't know. We're going to see here. So you see where my, my, my stitches are seamed, I'm going to grab both ends and I'm going to just pull them apart just like so. You see how that just pulls this together? Now there's a little bump there because there's like a fuzz on my yarn. Like that doesn't really show. It's just fuzz. Um, and I don't like that. I'll probably undo that. But right there, you can see how beautiful that is joined together. And I can just undo this one. You know, I don't, that didn't need to be there at all. But I have a little bit of a hole there, so what I can do is I could take this yarn and just seam that little bit together. It's right there in the corner at the turn. So, I mean, I could just come here. Let's just grab this and just see what we can get here. And just pull it, kind of pull it in. And I'm kind of mimicking, because this would be stitches to stitches. Just pull it together. And... I can come down here, pull my end down. Look how pretty that is. Now I have an end that again, if I look at my shoulder, I have this nice shoulder seam right there. I can weave in my end. But there, there it is, guys. So that's a shoulder and that is half the collar attached. So then when this side is complete and this collar is complete, you would attach your shoulder from here to here and then that collar would be attached to this half of the back of the neck okay and if you've left this long enough like you can pre-plan you can leave this long enough and seam this direction with your tail here and then you're you know you've got less tails to weave in once that's all done you then would just um, seam up your two collar pieces this one and this one just seam them up just together um, and what I would do is if you've left a nice long tail when you did your bind off, I would use that to seam that bit up. Once that's done, your piece will look a little something like this. Take a look. All right, so this is the sample, obviously. <laughs> it's kind of nice to look at it. But as you look at the inside here, you can see here is the inside of the back of my neck where everything is seamed together. These are the two edges of my collar seamed together. Again, 
you can do a mattress stitch. You could even leave these stitches live on your needle instead of binding them off and do the three needle bind off just like you did at the shoulder. That's a great way to do it. Um, that way you'd have a nice big seam on the inside and it's really easy to do that. You could even just whip stitch it together, whatever works for you. Um, but yeah, so that is all of the seaming. Like there's the shoulder, there's the back of the neck, there's the shoulder, and then there's the collar. Pretty easy stuff here. The very last thing to do, and this is sort of an optional thing, you don't have to do this, but I liked the idea of adding a finishing to the armhole edge. It's actually quite simple. You're just going to pick up stitches all the way around the armhole and then bind them off. If you're a crocheter, you could actually just single crochet around the whole piece. You could do slip stitches around the whole piece, whatever works for you. If you don't wanna do any of it, you can leave it as a raw edge. It's totally fine. But as we look closer, you can see it just gives a nice little finish to that raw edge. And again, I just picked up stitches and then I bound them off purl wise, meaning I purled all the way around to give it like a nice garter and it just made it really easy, okay? So that's, that's how that goes. And as far as picking up stitches, you guys, I'm pretty sure you know how to pick up stitches, but you essentially, you just go into the side and you would yarn over with your yarn. Whoops, let's see here, into the side, yarn over. <laughs> it's because I'm trying to show you quickly. You would go into the side of your piece, yarn over, and then pull up a loop. And you would do this all the way around the armhole, and the pattern gives you exact numbers if you want to use those. If you just want to um, eyeball it and make it so that it looks nice, you can do that as well. So you just go all the way around the armhole, and then once it's all the way done in the round, you then would continue in the round, right? And you would just bind them, you would bind them off as if they're pearls. So you would purl, purl, and then bind it off. Purl, purl, bind it off. If you're a crocheter, it's even easier. You simply put your hook in, pull up a stitch, put your hook into the next one, pull up a stitch, and you can either do a bind off like that, or I even like the single crochet. So in and pull up a stitch, in, pull up a stitch, and then single crochet. In, pull up a stitch, and then single crochet. All right, so you could do that all the way around as well. Totally up to you. And that's it, you guys. What do you think? Pretty manageable, right? I know that the minute you finish that right front, you'll be ready to start that left front and get it done in no time. The finishing part will probably take you about an hour by the time you seam together the shoulders and then get the collar set into place. But once it's done, last thing to do is just weave in your ends, if you have any ends anywhere, and you're ready to wear your piece. It's so simple, I love it. I am so proud of all of you for sticking through this knit along thus far and I cannot wait to see your finished sweaters. So make sure you share with us on social media. Use hashtag MarleyBird and hashtag Yarnspirations so that way we can see your work out there in the social media world and smash your like button. I am thrilled to have all of you here. Make sure you leave me a comment below. Let me know what your favorite part of the knit along has been so far. Maybe tell me something that you've learned that you didn't know before. I would love to know that. And that brings us to the end of the knit along, you guys. I hope you've enjoyed it as much as I have, and I cannot wait to see your finished items out there in the world. Join me back here again for future knit alongs and crochet alongs and just general videos to help you become a better knitter or crocheter. I'm Marley Bird and I'll see you again really soon. Bye. Thanks so much for joining me on the Marley Bird YouTube channel. If you liked what you saw, don't forget to hit subscribe. I've put a link right over there or you can watch a couple of the videos I've already selected for you right down there. If you want to follow me on social media, I've put my links right over there. You can have all Marley all the time. Bye, guys.